right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming to our Microsoft Teams Fundamentals training today on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon. My name is Shane and I will be leading our training today. I am a service advisor at the Microsoft Store in Pentagon City uh, when our store is open, but right now we are doing remote operations and because of that, I am helping lovely folks like yourselves get used to using the Microsoft suite of products. So today I'm going to be talking about Teams and I am joined by my associate Brandon, who will be moderating the chat for me. Uh, Brandon, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello everyone, my name is Brandon. I, like Shane, am a services advisor at the Pentagon City Store for Microsoft City, uh, for the Microsoft Store. I am very glad to be here today and help you work through this overview of Teams. All right, awesome. Thank you, Brandon. Um, so today we are, like I said, we are going to be going over Microsoft Teams. This is something that we have been using in our store for years now, and uh, it's definitely gotten to the point where it is second nature for us. So. We know a whole lot about it, but I can tell you that I'm always learning new things and they are always adding new things. So we are doing our best to keep up with all of the changes. Um, but uh, let me just give a quick introduction on what Teams is. So Microsoft Teams is the hub for teamwork in Office 365. It integrates Office 365 productivity tools in one place and is the next level of communication through chat and calls and collaboration through file sharing, co-authoring, and screen sharing. Um, it does allow you to collaborate and communicate seamlessly. It is a single place for your teams to meet around unified objectives with easy access to the applications they use to be productive in their roles. You can even host voice and video meetings to bring the team together in real time. It does keep all of the files that matter in one place it is built on SharePoint, which we will talk about exactly what it means that it was built on SharePoint. Uh, Teams mitigates common workplace issues like document versioning confusion and permissions issues by housing and sharing your files in the cloud. And it does keep all your tools in one place. You can use both Microsoft based and third party solutions alongside each other in a hub that centralizes your workflows and communications. I do have one caveat about that. Uh, keep in mind that everybody uh, who uses Teams does use a different tenant or a different version of Teams, depending on what organization or agency you work for. And uh, some of the people listening today will not have access to third party apps within Microsoft Teams. Some of the people listening today will. Uh, just keep in mind that when I go through the apps that we have available, I am only going to go through the first party apps. And uh, if you do have access to the third party apps, you can go and look at them at your own pace. Um, Teams is deeply integrated with Office 365 and includes utilization of one's digital identity within Office 365. Permissions, presence, and more are tied to this identity. Um, your digital identity is essentially tied to your work email address, and it is what is given to you to use through Outlook, to use through other Microsoft products, um, and it is what you will use to log into Teams. Uh, and like I just said, all of your permissions are tied to this identity as well as your presence, whether or not you are busy or do not disturb. Um, we do call uh, C's or teams the three C's, communicate, collaborate, and customize. You can communicate through chat meetings and calls, collaborate together with integrated Office 365 apps, and customize your workplace and achieve more. There is also a fourth C, but it is not mandatory. Uh, if your organization or agency has purchased a specific package for Teams, you can make calls using your uh, in-organization calling infrastructure. Uh, otherwise, you will just be able to make calls to other people within Teams. Um, Teams does have a robust plat cross-platform experience. Uh, the recommended is going to be the desktop app, which is available for Windows 10 and Macintosh OS. Uh, there's also a mobile app, which is a little bit different, but still works very well for iOS and Android. And then there's also a web app, which I am going to be presenting with the web app because I am not able to present my own version of Teams 
while I am using Teams to share my screen through the live event I'm currently hosting. Um, so you will see the web app. There are very few differences between the web app and the desktop app, but I will highlight them as we get to them. Uh, if you're going to use the web app, I recommend using the Chromium version of Microsoft Edge, otherwise called New Edge, um, or you can use Google Chrome. Those are going to be the recommended versions. And that does it for my introduction. Just give me one second while I switch my screen over. And here we go. Alrighty. So here we are. This is Microsoft Teams. Now, when you first boot up Microsoft Teams, it may look something like this. Right now we are on the chat portion um, and there are several other options over here on the left as well as at the top. Uh, just give me one moment. I'm going to go over these user interface options so that you can be familiar with everything you are looking at. So over on the left, we do have the main menu of Teams. These are going to be all the different options that you can use to navigate through the application itself. Up at the top, we have activity and activity is going to be your notification feed that is going to tell you exactly what has happened in Teams. Um, it's very similar to social media or a smartphone notification feed. Uh, it will list things from most recent to oldest. And it's a great place to go uh, when you come back to work after being away, either having a day off or coming back the next day to activity and see what has happened that is relevant to you. Under that, we do have chat. And chat is going to be if you have ever used Skype for Business, chat is very similar to Skype for Business and how Skype for Business worked. Um, if you haven't, don't worry. Chat is also going to be very similar to uh, instant messaging, texting, direct messaging, anything like that. That is how chat is going to work. You will be able to chat one on one with other people or you can group chat with people. Underneath chat, we do have Teams, and that is going to be the bulk of what the app has to offer. That is the main focus, as you can probably imagine, by being the name of the application itself. That is where all of your teams will live. Uh, we will go over that probably the most in depth. Uh, first, I'm going to go over chat, but then we'll go over Teams, and that will be the bulk of our training. Under that, we have Calendar. If you have used Outlook at all, the calendar in Teams is very similar to Outlook, with the major difference being that the Teams calendar is unique to you and you are not able to view shared or group calendars within Teams yet. So if you do a lot of work involving shared and group calendars, uh, you may want to stick, stick with Outlook for now. However, one of the things I will go over is how to create a Teams meeting with Microsoft Outlook so that even if you are still using Outlook, you will be able to create those team meetings and you will not be left behind by your coworkers that are only using Teams. Under that, we have the calls menu. Uh, the calls menu is very simple. It is where your favorite contacts live uh, and your call history. Um, so if you ever need to make any calls or look at your history or check your Teams voicemail, that is where you'll be able to do it. And then under that, we have files and files is going to be where all of your files within Teams are hanging out. And um, that is, yeah, that's just going to be where all of the files that you have access to in Teams are located. And then under that, we have an ellipsis. Anytime you see an ellipsis like this, it means you can click it to get a uh, menu with some more options. This right here is giving us some uh, first party apps that we can add. I'm going to go over some of those apps a little bit more in detail later. Down here is the app browser. This will allow you to look at all of the apps that you can add to Microsoft Teams. And then underneath that, we do have the help menu. The help menu is one of the last things I will go over, but I do think that it is one of the most important because you can access trainings and also suggest features in the help menu. Now up at the top, 
uh, right here we have the new chat button. If I click on this button, it will allow me to create a new chat with um, one of my coworkers. And then we have the search or command bar. The reason it's called both of those names is that you can use this bar to search and you can use it to enter commands depending on what you type. It is a very robust search and it will search not only messages within Teams, but also people and files that you have access to within Teams as well. So it is a very robust search feature. The commands you can enter are also pretty varied as well. And then the last part of the user interface I want to go over is this menu right over here. This is the Teams settings menu or the digital identity menu. Um, this will give you the ability to change some of the options within Teams as well as around your digital identity as well, including your availability, status messages, and your saved messages. And we'll go over that a little bit deeper later. So the first thing that I am going to go over is uh, the chat within Microsoft Teams. But before I do that, uh, Brandon, I saw a couple questions coming through. Um, are there any that you want to ask me before I start going into specifics? No, no, you're free to jump on in. We're good. All right, excellent. Well, keep those questions coming. Keep Brandon busy. I know his fingers need to work out. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So here we are in the chat within Microsoft Teams. So as you can see, we have all of our chats are listed over here on the left. Uh, they are going to be sorted by the most recent chat. So the most recent messages are going to appear on top. And then it's going to go back in time as you scroll down that way. When you have a chat selected, here will be the chat shown right here. Um, and actually, uh, before we even started the training, I did see somebody asking about hiding versus deleting a chat. I do want to reiterate because this is a question that we get pretty much every time we deliver one of these trainings. Uh, you, there is no way to delete a chat. You can hide a chat. And as long as nobody sends any messages within that chat, it will no longer be in your list of chats, but you will still be able to go pull that chat up. So for example, uh, I have a coworker, John, and if I want to talk to John, I don't see his chat over here. I can even scroll down and I see some group chats that have John in them, but I don't see my chat with John. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to click on new chat. I'm going to type John's name and there he is. And now here you go. This is my chat history with John. I can send a message right there that is going to uh, make this chat permanent. And now my chat with John is over here on the left. So even though I had hidden that chat, the chat history is persistent and I can go back and look at other messages that John and I have sent to each other. Now within the chat itself, um, we have some more user interface options here. I'm going to go over the message interface more in depth in just a moment. But before I do that, I want to show you up here. Uh, you can hover over John's portrait or name and get some more information, including his email address, his availability. Right now he is offline. Uh, I can start a new chat, although I'm in a chat with him right now, so I don't need to do that. I can send him an email. I can view his organization. I can even start a video call or an audio call. And if you are in a chat with somebody, you can see those video call and audio call buttons are also over here on the right. There are also a few tabs. Again, I'm going to go over tabs more in detail, but just know that in all chats and teams, you will have availability of chats up at the top, as well as this little plus icon, which will allow you to make new tabs. So down here at the bottom, we do have the message window. So anytime I type a message like this one that I just typed here, uh, it is just going to send a default message, but we do have some other things that we can play around with. So this first icon down here is the format option. And if we click on that, it will expand our view and allow us to play around with some other options. 
Now, if you've ever used the word processor, a lot of these options are going to look very familiar to you. You can bold, italicize, underline. Yes, you can bold, italicize, underline, strike through. You can change the colors and the font sizes, and you can do some paragraph formatting options as well. You can also quote and add hyperlinks to that chat as well. So if you ever want to make your chats a little bit fancier, you can always do that. Next to that, we do have this exclamation point, and that is going to let us decide how important our message is. So by default, all the messages are going to be sent with standard importance, but you can click on this exclamation right here and mark your message as important. Um, and then you can also mark a message as urgent, Although I definitely recommend to use caution when marking a message as urgent, because if you mark a message as urgent, you can see that the recipient will be notified every two minutes for 20 minutes. Um, and what that means is that on every device that they use Teams on, whether they're using the web app, the desktop app, or the mobile phone app, they're going to get a notification every two minutes until they respond, um, or until 20 minutes have passed. Once 20 minutes have passed, they will receive an email saying that they missed your message and to follow up as soon as possible. So I'm not going to send an urgent message, but I am going to mark a message as important. And now you can see that it pops up and it says important and it highlights the message in red. And I'm going to go ahead and say this is very important. And now you can see it even showed a little red bubble on the side saying that the message is important. And what that does is it allows us to uh, see the important messages as we are scrolling through the screen. Um, next to that, we have the paperclip, and the paperclip is the attach a file button. This is going to allow you to attach a file from OneDrive that you already have uploaded in OneDrive or upload from my computer. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you is that these two options are a lot more similar than they may look because when you share a file within a chat in Microsoft Teams, it will actually automatically upload to your OneDrive. So if you choose a file you already have in OneDrive, it is just going to share that link and allow people in that chat to either view or edit your file depending on what your permissions are. Um, and it is going to allow editing of the source file if you allow people to edit it. That is one way that we can reduce versioning confusion instead of emailing copies of a file back and forth to each other. You are sharing the link to the original source file. So if I click on this OneDrive link, it'll let me browse my OneDrive and share a link to one of those files. If I upload from my computer, say for example, it's saved on my desktop or in my documents folder and I haven't uploaded it to OneDrive, uh, posting it here, will upload it to my OneDrive. It'll always upload to the OneDrive of the person who is posting the file uh, and then share a link to that file from my OneDrive. Um, so both of these options really are very similar. It just depends on where the file is right now when I want to share it. Next to that, we have the fun options. We can click on this emoji button to add our emoji right here. We're definitely having a lot of younger people enter the workforce who have been typing almost exclusively with emojis their entire life. So this does allow them to uh, speak in ways that make them comfortable. Then we have the GIF um, menu. You can go ahead and put in GIFs. You, you can type here to search. So if I want to find cat GIFs, there we go. I can go ahead and put in my favorite cat GIFs. And we also have the stickers. Stickers allow you to create your own images and memes. Uh, again, these are all just fun things um, that you can play around with if you want. And if you are part of a team, keep in mind that the owners of the team can uh, decide to disable some of these if they find them too distracting. Next to that, we have the schedule a meeting button. I'm not going to go into this yet because a little bit later we are going to talk about scheduling a meeting within Teams and all of the details that come with that. But I do just want to point out that if you are in a one on one chat or a group chat, you can click on schedule a meeting and it will create a meeting with all members of the chat as required invitees. Then we have the stream button. If I click on that, 
I can paste a link from Microsoft Stream. If you have not heard of it, Microsoft Stream is our video hosting platform and you can use it as basically like a YouTube for your organization. You can upload videos to Microsoft Stream and you can link to them from anywhere within Teams. Chat is just one of the places that you can add a stream link and that way you can directly embed the video. And then the last thing we have here is, oops, did not mean to click that one. The last thing we have here is praise and praise will allow you to uh, praise somebody for the work that they have done. Um, again, praise is another thing that may or may not be available to you in your tenant. Uh, it depends on your system administrator or your IT department. But if you do have it, I definitely re recommend using it as much as you can because it does show people that you are noticing the work that they are doing and it makes them feel good. And it also uh, calls them out for good work in front of everybody else in the team or the chat as well. So if I have already sent praise to John, so I'll show you what that looks like. If I select one of these and I fill out my message, it is going to post a message that looks like this. So I sent praise to John. I said, thank you very much. And now you can see under here that it has his name, but instead of just being normal text, uh, it is a link. I can highlight it and it gives me the ability to uh, look at John's information right here. Uh, but in addition to that, that will also send him a notification saying that I mentioned him. So that is called mentioning and there's an easy way to do it without having to create praise. All you have to do is type at or shift to and it will give you a list of people in the chat, but you can also start typing their name. And now we see John right there. And I can go ahead and say, good afternoon and send that message. And now you can see his name has become a link. We do have a few other options that we can get to for each message. If I hover over the message, it does give me the ability to react to that message. We have standard thumbs up. We have a heart. We also have laugh, surprise, sad, and angry. Um, the, a good reason to use reactions is to show somebody that you have seen a message without having to flood the chat or the replies um, with a bunch of people saying, OK, thanks, or I got it, or I agree. So for example, you can make a post in a group chat or in a team that says, hey, everybody, here's some information. Please react to this message once you've seen it. And then if you do that, you can hover over the reactions and you can get a list of everybody who has reacted to that message. So in addition to these reactions, however, we also have an ellipsis. And remember, the ellipsis means we have another menu we can go into. And we do have the option to save this message. We also have the option to edit or delete the message as well. Again, editing or deleting messages is something that can be turned on or off at the admin level. So keep in mind, if you do not see these options, that is because it is turned off for your tenant. We can also mark a message as unread if we want to get, come to it later, or we can even send an email to ourselves uh, with the contents of the message, and we can use that if we want to come back to it later, and we don't want to use the save the message feature. I'm going to go ahead and click edit just so you can see what that looks like. Here we go. We've got another box popping up. We can even click on format and change our formatting a little bit. But another thing I wanted to mention about uh, mentioning somebody is that it will automatically put in their first and last name. But right at the end, if you hit backspace, it will get rid of their last name and you can go ahead and mention them by just their first name. Now, if I scroll up a little bit, you will also be able to see, here we go, this is a message John sent that mentioned me. Any, men any messages that mention me are going to look a little bit different. They're gonna have that bubble just like on the important messages, but this time with an at symbol inside of them, and they are going to be highlighted in orange. And then my name is going to be highlighted in orange as well. This way, if a lot of people are mentioned in one message, your name is going to stick out because it is going to be orange instead of that uh, nice teams purple that we have down here. 
Alrighty, so now that we have a nice little chat going with John, let's say that I'm working on something and I want to loop somebody else in to this conversation with John. Up here in the upper right, I do have the add people button. And if I click on that, it will allow me to enter the name of somebody that I can add. Let me see, do we have Alan? No, we don't have Alan in here. All right, let me add uh, Mark. No, I think I already have a chat with them. Here, Christy. Do I already have one with Christy? I do. I've got too many chats, everybody. I know that feeling. Um, let's, I think we've got Krista, or Crystal, there we go. So here we go, got Crystal. I'm gonna add Crystal to this chat. Now we can see, because this is a brand new group chat that I have created from a one-on-one -on -one chat, my one-on-one -on -one chat with John is still over here on the left, but now I have a group chat with John and Crystal. Um, and so I can go ahead and say, hello, everyone. And now over here on the side, I have my new group chat. Up here, you can see who is in the group chat and you can see that uh, I have added Crystal and John to the chat. And I have now created a group chat and um, anybody who I have invited to this chat will be able to see the messages in the chat. But now let's say that I have somebody else I want to bring into this chat as well. So now this add people button is going to be a little bit different. I have the ability to remove anybody from this chat. I can click add people again, or I can leave this chat. If I click add people, now I have a new option. In addition to just adding somebody to the chat, I can choose to not include any chat history. I can also include chat history from the past number of days, or I can include all chat history. Let's include chat history from the past one day and go ahead and click add. And there we go. Now you can see that I have added Mark into the chat. But you know what? Maybe I don't actually want Marvin to be in this chat, so I can go up here and I can click remove. Now you will see Marvin will still have access to the chat history. So if you remove somebody from a chat, they are still going to have access to all of the chat history that they were present there to see, um, but they will no longer receive new updates from that group chat. And now you can see I removed Marvin from the chat. I'm gonna go ahead and add him one more time and include all chat history just so you can see what that looks like, because now it is going to have a special message that says, I added Marvin to the chat and shared all chat history. Now, one more thing I do want to mention about group chats is notice that the name of this group chat is just the, a list of the people who are currently in the group chat. It just says Crystal, John, and Marvin up at the top, and it just says Crystal, John, and Marvin over here. This little pencil icon right here will allow me to go in and change the name of this group chat. So let me just call this one Teams Training. And there we go. Shane changed the group name to Teams Training. It says Teams Training up here, and it says Teams Training over here. Now, even though I've renamed this though, it still comes back to that original problem of I just have too many chats over here. So we do have a few options that we can use to organize our chats a little bit better. If we click this ellipsis right here, we have some more options. We can mark as unread if we want to come back to that chat, or we can pin the chat. Now pinning the chat, what that does is it pins the chat to the top of the screen. And so no matter what messages are sent here and no matter how long that this chat has remained dormant, uh, it will always remain up at the top here under this pinned chats. So I can go ahead and pin my chat with John as well. And here we go. I can even click on this to collapse it and not have to look at those other recent chats. So any of the chats that are the most relevant to you, you can hold up here. So people in your direct work group or maybe your favorite coworker, you can keep those chats pinned up here at the top.
And then another option that you have is, like I was talking about earlier, there is no way to delete a chat, but if, for example, the person that you are chatting with no longer works in your department or maybe no longer works for the company and you're not going to be chatting with them anymore, you can hide a chat. And my chat with John was hidden at the beginning of the training. And remember, all I did to bring it back up was I went to new chat and I typed in his name. Keep in mind, because the chat is still around, it's just hidden, it is not deleted. You can still search for anything that you had in that chat. Another option that you have is if you are in, for example, a group chat that you have been added to and you don't want to leave it because it has a lot of really good information in it, but people are uh, sending messages left and right. Um, I know I've been in the situation where my family or my friends have added me to a group chat and then at one o'clock in the morning I'm trying to sleep and they are all sending cat pictures back and forth to each other. Um, that can get kind of annoying. So under more options, another option is the ability to mute a chat. If you mute a chat, the icon will be replaced with this little mute symbol here, and you will no longer receive notifications for that chat. They'll still be here. You can still go click on them. You can still go look at what's in the chat, but you're not going to get notified every time somebody sends a new message. And the last thing I want to go over really quickly is these tabs up here at the top. I'm going to go over them deeper when we get into Teams next, but I do just want to bring these up because there are some unique tabs that are available only when you are in a one-on-one -on -one chat. Uh, every chat and every team is going to have a Files tab, and that is just going to be the files that have been uploaded to that chat or to that team. I'm going to go over that more in detail shortly when I get to Teams, but just know in a chat this is where you find them. The next is going to be organization, and this is not going to exist because we don't have it set up for our demo tenant. But if you click on organization within Teams on your tenant, you will be able to see the organizational hierarchy of the person you are looking at, who their direct reports are, who their managers are, all the way up to the top of the organization. So that can be useful. For example, maybe you need to get in contact with the manager of somebody. I don't know, but that could be useful for that. You can also click on activity and activity will show you that person and everything that they have posted that you have access to. So these are all posts that John has made within Teams and these are the ones that I am able to see. So if he posted in a team I'm not a part of or if he posted in a private channel that I do not belong to or maybe he just sent a message in a group chat that I'm not there for. Uh, they will not show up in here. It's only going to be the ones I have access to. These other two are custom tabs. One of them is a Word file and one of them is Bing the website. Again, I'm going to get into those a little bit deeper when we get to Teams. Uh, just know that these organization and activity tabs are unique to the chat itself. And with that, that is about everything regarding the chat interface. Uh, Brandon, do we have any questions that you need me to go over before I move on to Teams? Yes, Shane, we have a couple of questions. Um, the one question is, uh, can you add GIFs from the web? Uh, yes, you can. <clears throat> there are a couple different ways to do it. You can simply copy a uh, GIF or GIF. I don't really care how you say it, potato, potato. Um, you can copy it from the web and you can simply paste it into here. If you right click it, you have this same menu uh, that you might be used to and you can paste any pictures in here and it will allow you to add them that way. If you have a URL for a GIF, you can put it in here and it will automatically load a preview um, of that uh, GIF through the URL. And then if you have one saved to your computer, you can click on this little uh, paperclip right here and you can upload an image uh, saved from your computer. Um, uh, the next question, thank you Shane, would be can you go over changing the priority of a message again? Absolutely. So down here at the bottom, this little exclamation point right here uh, is listed as a separate option in a chat 
Um, when I get to teams next, I will show you that it is actually in a different place in a team, and that is because in a team you cannot send an urgent message. You can only mark something as important. Um, but right here, this exclamation point, you can mark a message as important or you can mark a message as urgent. And this right here is what an important message will look like after it has been sent. Thanks, Shane. Uh, the last question, and I do apologize, but I'm going to ask you to actually go into the Q&A section and look for the message sent at 1.31 p.m. It's going to be difficult for me to read to you exactly the question, the way it was phrased. You feel able to do that? So this one, can you create chat groups? Yes, that, that that I was having difficulty phrasing that exactly as it was posed to me. So I think what that means is <clears throat> if I have a chat over here, uh, can I organize these chats so that they are in subgroups or folders or something like that? And the answer to that question is going to be no, because once you get to the point where you are organizing your chats that deeply, you probably want to actually make a team. Um, if you need to put that much organization into your chats, then those people are probably going to want to be in a team where you can organize everything by channels. Uh, would you agree with that, Brandon? I do. I uh, uh, thank you for phrasing it that way. I was having trouble even kind of tracking it, but no, you are correct. That's that is the correct answer. Thank you. All right. Awesome. And that's it. Yeah, you're good to go. All right, cool. Let me just uh, unpin these chats real quick and hide my chat with John. And let's get into Teams. Alrighty, so what is a team within Microsoft oh, Teams? Oh, hey, yep. wait, Shane, I'm sorry. One second. Uh, I have a comment here saying that the exclamation point doesn't exist in the same place for them and their tenant as it does for us and ours. Interesting. Um, so that might, yeah, so that might be uh, a matter of comparing uh, features that are available, but I'm seeing here that uh, I, it just came in, but uh, about a minute ago. But uh, it's under the editing area in, yeah. in the FCs. And then so that is where that is where it is when you are in a actual an actual team. Um, in a team, you have to click formatting, and then it's either going to be all the way over here on the right, depending on your screen size. It might be within this ellipsis for the extra menu. Uh, um, but in the chat, it should be in the same place. In the chat, I mean, it might be, but you know what? If they're not able to send urgent messages, the reason it's in formatting here is because all you can do is click on it to mark as important. Um, there's no menu that comes up and allows you to select urgent. So if urgent messages are uh, forbidden in your tenant, then it would make sense that the exclamation point would not be on the bottom here and would only be in the um, formatting section. So that's a good call out. Um, thank you to whoever made that statement. Awesome. Is Hold there on. anything else? One, yeah, one more. Uh, we have a couple. We have a couple of things. Sure. Up. Um, are files being added or linked in a chat message? So let me go ahead and show you what it looks like when somebody shares a file in a chat message. So here's my chat with John. Let me scroll up because I know at one point John shared a file with me. You can see that he and I send, spend a lot of time sending the same <laughs> things back and forth to each other. Mm -hmm. There we go. So this is what it looks like when John sends a file within a chat. This is him clicking on attach and attaching a file. The file is called, please check this. And um, 
this is what it is going to look like. So if we have somebody asking about files, uh, I'm just going to go into file editing within Teams right now, just because that can kind of go anywhere within the training. So this is what it will look like. This is a link to the file right here. If I click on this ellipsis right here, it gives me some options. I can edit in Teams, which is what will happen if I just click on it. I can open it in the desktop app. If I click on this one, it will stream a version of the file to my desktop app, um, which will allow me to uh, edit that source file without having to create a copy. It'll just stream a copy from the internet. I can open it in the browser, which will open it in the web app. And I can also download the file. That is the only one that I wouldn't necessarily recommend unless you need to work on that file offline because that will create a new copy of the file and will no longer be editing the source file. Uh, keep in mind that if you share a file with somebody, even though they ed can edit the source file, you can always look at the version history, look at all the changes they've made, and decide to undo any of their changes if you prefer. You can also get the link to the file if you want to share it around. But again, keep in mind that the permissions are set by the person who originally shared the file. And if they do not have the permissions set to entire organization can view or entire organization can edit, if you try to share it with somebody else, they will not be able to see it. So I'm just going to click on it because that will take us directly into the Teams editing interface. And I will show you what it looks like to edit a file within Teams. So this is the file John uploaded. It's some pictures of his dog. Uh, so it is a very important work document that we have been working on. Uh, we just had a pop-up that said some changes have been made since I last visited this page. You can see this, up, this blue dot right here will highlight the changes that John has made since the last time I looked at the file. Um, and this is what it's like to edit the file within Teams itself. We do have this nice button right here that allows us to open it in the desktop app uh, if we do decide that we want to use that. And the reason we would want to use that is because this is a version of the web app of Microsoft Word, and therefore some of the options are not available. It's going to be some advanced formatting options as well as some other add-ins like resume assistant and stuff like that. Those aren't going to be available in the web app, so you definitely uh, might want to use the desktop app if you have a requirement for it or you need to um, uh, use some more advanced formatting. Uh, you can also work on this file at the same time as other people who are working on it as well. That is called co-authoring and you can co-author with up to 99 people at once, uh, but as anybody who has used the internet knows, um, the more people using it at the same time, the slower it gets. We recommend 10 is kind of the sweet spot where you still have a lot of people working on it at the same time, but it hasn't really started to lose efficiency. However, once you start getting over 10, it is possible that you may not be able to um, edit it as quickly as you would like. In addition to that, you also have the ability to set comments on the file. Um, and you can even open the conversation. If I click on the conversation, it will show my conversation with John. And you can see where we have had our conversation and I can contribute to this chat. Hey, Shane. Yeah. I'm gonna stop you real quick just for a couple of questions. Um, one, and I'm gonna read them both verbatim. Uh, one is dealing with records is of course important and so emails chats documents are needed to be archivable as a supervisor and as someone who creates government records i am interested in how this supports required record management um so to answer that question i can say that uh all chats and teams um are all like I said, their history is persistent, but they are all backed up in SharePoint. They can all be exported um, and they can all be archived via SharePoint. 
that is definitely a bit more advanced and it's not something I'm really going to go super into today. Uh, if it is something you are interested in, um, I can tell you how to get in contact with uh, our Microsoft contact for your organization. Or if you want to leave your email address, we can make sure somebody gets in contact with you. Uh, but just everything in Teams is hosted on SharePoint in the back end. And so it has all of the same abilities uh, as SharePoint has had for, you know, however long it has been a thing. So, yeah, I hope that answers the question a little bit. Um, it's just not something I can super go into detail. No, uh, thank you, Shane. That's good. And if the asker of that question wants to uh, uh, send their email or their contact information in the same lane way, it'll be private and I'll be able to record it and uh, we can um, review it later and get, get back to you with a more specific answer. So that's fine. Thank you, Shane. Um, uh, the other question is, can you sign and return a document, keep it private in chat, store in a separate location, i.e. files? So uh, permissions for a file are determined at the document level. So if I have created a document um, and I have made it so that only recipients can view or edit that document, that means that when I send it to somebody using uh, chat, I'll go back to the chat window. If I send that file to somebody using chat, um, then only they will be able to view and edit the file. Even if they try to share it with somebody else, those new people will not be able to view or edit that file as long as you have set those permissions. So all files sent within a chat are going to be private between um, the people in that chat as long as you have not set the permissions on that file to everyone in your organization can view and edit. And then if you do want to um, sign something, uh, you can use inking within Teams to do that. Uh, but if you are trying to um, send files back and forth that you need to sign, uh, I'm not sure what your current way of doing that is, but I know at our store we use DocuSign for stuff like that. Um, there are ways to integrate that in with Teams as well, but that would have to be uh, added at the admin level. Um, and I do believe that is still in a preview right now. So hopefully that helps. Thank you, Shane. We're all good to go. Cool. Alrighty. So on to teams. So a team is a workspace that you're either an owner or a member of. When you first click on teams, this is something similar to what you might see. Uh, real quick, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pretend I'm not doing this. I'm going to leave that team. Yep, leave it. Cool. So when you open up Microsoft Teams for the first time and you click on the Teams button, you should see something similar to this. If you are a part of any Teams over here, they will show up on the left side on the Teams pane under your Teams. Uh, you may be a part of a team before you even open up the app. That is not abnormal. That's pretty normal because when you create a team, you can choose to add everybody in your organization to that team. Um, if you do not see any teams down here, you can join a team and you can do that by clicking join or create a team down here. So I'm going to click on that real quick and let you see what this looks like. So there are several different kinds of teams and I'm going to click create team just so we can go over the different kinds of teams real quick. Keep in mind, you may not be able to create a team depending on the settings for your uh, tenant. You may need to get permission from your system administrator or IT department. Uh, can you tell we like our system administrators and IT departments in Microsoft? So if I click on create a team right here, we do have two options. We can build a team from scratch or we can create it from an existing Office 365 group. So if you already have an Office 365 group and you want to uh, make that into a team, you can easily do that right here. But let's build a team from scratch so we can see these options. Three different types of teams that we can make. The first one is private. 
If you make a private team, it is going to create that team. You are going to be the owner of that team and nobody else will be in that team. Thankfully, you can manually add people to that team. You can add them by uh, searching for that email address, their email address in the member ad adding menu, or you can generate a code to that team, which I will show in a little bit, and you can send that code to other people. You can make a team public. If a team is public, then anybody in your organization will be able to join that team if they wish, but they will not be automatically added to that team. That is going to be an org-wide team. An org-wide team means that everybody in your organization will automatically be added to that team. And um, sorry, uh, and they will, yeah, they will automatically be added to that team. And as soon as they boot up teams, those teams will already be here on the side. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this just so I can show you. So if a code is generated and shared with you, you can enter that code right here and you can use that to join a private team. And if a team is public and you are not a part of it, it will be listed over here. So once you click on join or create a team down here, all of the public teams that you are not yet a part of will be listed over here. If they're not, you can go up here to search teams as well. So, uh, like I said, teams have owners and members. So an owner is originally the person who creates the team. Uh, and then once you have invited people to your team, they are automatically members, but you can decide to make them owners. Again, you may need to request team creating. Uh, and this is what the teams look like over here on the left. Uh, teams have channels within them. Um, a channel is dedicated to a specific topic, department, or project. Conversations around that topic, department, and project are held here, and the channel can be customized with its own tabs to bring resources into one place. A channel also creates a folder for the channel's shared files. So now when I said that everything is hosted on SharePoint, this is what I mean. When you create a team, uh, that team has its own folder within SharePoint and every channel in that team has its own subfolder within SharePoint where all of the files are located. So if I click on this general channel right here, uh, every single team when it is created starts with a general channel and that's going to be meant for just a general conversation and uh, stuff like that. Um, and up here we have our tabs. If I go ahead and click on files, you will see all of the files that have been uploaded to this channel. Uh, I don't know if we have any in this one yet. Uh, just this email. Uh, Northern Earthquake Exercise definitely has some files in it. So if I click on files, these are all going to be the files that have been uploaded to this channel. And that could be files that were copied and pasted into a message or files that were uploaded using the paperclip. Or if you are in this menu, you can even create new files directly from this menu, or you can upload files from this menu. Another cool option is the sync option right here that will put this SharePoint folder on your computer and allow you to access files within that folder and upload new files to that folder directly on your computer from within File Explorer. You can also copy a link or you can download all of the uh, files and folders. This will download a zip file with everything inside of it. Again, I don't really recommend that unless you really have to work offline on some of these files because that will create copies of all the files. If you have cloud storage other than OneDrive you want to add, you can do that here. Again, that may not be available in your tenant. And you can also click on this to go directly to the SharePoint folder. Uh, that this channel has. So within a channel itself, instead of just having a uh, 
normal chat function like we saw earlier in chat. This has actual posts that can have replies as well. So it's much more similar to social media that way in that every time something is posted down here at the bottom, it will show up as a new post. And then now you can see all of these reply, reply, so on and so forth. Um, anybody can reply to these messages and you can see if there are replies, I can click on that and it will allow me to see what replies there are. Another option we have is the ability to create announcements that look like this. The way we get to that is if we click on the format button, uh, we do have the option to add a subject. Here you can see we have our subject right here, um, but here it says new conversation. If I click on that, I can click on announcement, and now we have our announcement. You can change the colors of the background as well. Uh, here we have this blue, but up here you can see I made it that nice forest green. You can pick any of these colors here, and you can also add an image to this as well if you want to put a min an image as the background instead. Um, like we talked about earlier, this is how you can mark a message as important as well. You can mark any kind of message within Teams as important. Uh, you can also determine who is allowed to reply. You can make everybody able to reply, or you can make it so only that you and moderators can reply. And you can post in multiple channels. So if I post in multiple channels, yeah, I can discard that. You will see this icon right here. So if I highlight over this icon, this little links in a chain icon, you can see that I have actually posted this announcement in two different channels. I have posted it in the general of Northern Earthquake, Earthquake Exercise and the general of Hazmat and Environmental Program. Now, the nice thing about posting in multiple channels is Teams knows that multiple channels may not have the same members as other channels. So uh, I have replied to this announcement right here. Here's my reply. But if I go to Hazmat and Environmental Program, you will see that that reply is not there. So if an announcement is posted, it will not necessarily, the replies will be unique to the channel that that post is posted in. Um, it, they will be unique to the channel where those replies were made. Whenever you do reply to something, you do get the same options that you have down here. You can format it, attach, and then do all of your fun stuff as well. So that is what it looks like having conversations within a channel in Microsoft Teams. Uh, before I move on to some of the team's uh, settings, do we have any questions you want me to go over, Brandon? Uh, no, man, we're clear. Awesome. So uh, just like in chats, I do have ways that I can organize these teams over here on the left. So again, we can click on these ellipses to the right and give us some more options. We can hide a team. Now, unlike a chat, if we hide a team, instead of just disappearing from our view, it will actually come down here to the bottom under hidden teams. And if I click on that, now you can see that I have hidden this team. So hiding a team is a good way to get a team out of your line of sight if you don't necessarily want to leave that team, but if you want to, uh, and if you still want to be able to access the resources in that team, you can just hide that team. If I click on this ellipsis, I can also click on show right here and that will bring my team back up into this menu. Some other options you have, uh, you can add a channel, add members, leave the team, edit the team, and you can also manage the team, which will give you a menu that gives you many of these options as well. And then you can also manage tags. Now tags are pretty cool because they are a group of people. You can add a group of people to a tag and you can then use at to mention that group of people. Do I have, uh, 
Let me see if we have any tags in this one. Project legal, that's right. So if I do at project one legal, and at project two legal, and hit enter. Now you can see I have mentioned both of those tags and this one is highlighted orange because as you can see, I am a part of this tag. That's me, the little S right there. I can click on members to see everybody who's in that tag. And there we go, we can see these people are in this tag. I can even click on chat with group if I want to start a group chat with everybody who is a part of this tag. So it's another good way to be able to organize people within a team. All right, let me go ahead and click on manage team and go over some of the options we have for changing a team's settings. So here we have a list of members within the team. Um, over here, I can add a member and if I click on that, it will just bring up this and I can go ahead and for example, start searching for somebody. There we have Mike. I'm not going to add anybody right now. I think Mike is already a part of this team. Underneath that, we do have the list of people. These are all of the owners of the team. It has what tags they're a part of, uh, their location, what title they have, as well as their role over here. Any of these people I can go and click because I am an owner and change them to a member if I want. Keep in mind, yep. Keep in mind that you can make yourself a member if you are an owner, so just uh, be careful with that because if that does happen, you will need to get another owner to promote you back to a member or back to an owner. Underneath that, we do have all of the members and guests in the team as well. Uh, again, you can go over and boost somebody up to an owner if you would like through here. You can also search the members of the team if there are too many and you don't want to scroll. Pending requests. So if a team has been created and that team is private, uh, anybody can recommend somebody for that team. And if they do, it will show up here in pending requests. So you only have access to pending requests if you are an owner of a team, um, but that way you can see all of the people who want to join your team and decide whether or not they uh, are allowed in the team. You can change the channels within a team. Uh, here you can see whether you want the channels to show for you. Over here on the left you can see where it says five hidden channels. Uh, these are hidden channels over here um, and you can show them to have them appear in your normal list or you can hide them if maybe they're not as relevant to you. You can also choose whether you want it to show for other members as well. And then you can delete channels if you want to delete those channels. You can also pin channels up to the top. So for example, if I pin a channel, you can see it will appear up here at the top, just like as if I had pinned a chat. And then you can see right here, that there are different types of channels. Um, there is a possibility to make a private channel. And if you make a private channel, you will be able to determine who can access that channel, just like you could for a private team. Um, a private channel within a team will, um, sorry, one second. A private channel within a team uh, will only be visible to those that have been invited to it. And even if somebody is an owner of a team, if you make a private channel within that team, uh, you will be able to make them either an owner or a member of that channel. So when you create a private channel, you can control everything about it. Then we have the settings. Uh, this will allow us to change the team picture. We can change member permissions so we can decide whether members are allowed to create and update channels, create private channels, delete channels, add apps, upload custom apps, uh, create, update, remove tabs, create, update, remove connectors, as well as whether they can delete or edit their messages. 
Um, this can be turned on and off per team, but these things can also be turned on and off at the admin level as well. So if you do not have access to them in chat, this is why. You can also give some guest permissions. You can choose whether or not people are allowed to mention the entire team or the entire channel. Here is where you can generate a team code. So if you generate a team code, you can give that to anybody and they will be able to join the team from the uh, join or create a team menu over here. Now keep in mind, even if you have a private team, if you give somebody a uh, join code, they will be they will not show up in your pending requests. They will completely bypass pending requests and they will just join the team. So you definitely want to be careful when doing that. And if you find that that team code has gotten out and people are starting to join your team that you don't want, you can go ahead and click remove right here. And that join code will no longer be active. You can always click on generate right here to generate another one. And then under here you have the ability for people to use fun stuff. You can turn Giphy stickers and memes and custom memes on and off in here. And then who is allowed to add and edit tags. And then the last two options are going to be analytics and apps. Analytics are good for people who like data a lot. You can see how much people are using your team and whether or not you need to uh, drive usage a little bit more. And then apps will just list all of the apps that are currently in your team. All right, uh, Brandon, do we have any outstanding questions right now? Um, I see right now somebody wants to know how uh, we showed all of the tags. I can go back and look at that again. So in any team, you can go in to this ellipsis right here. I can click on that and I can see manage tags right here. And you are able to look at this menu whether or not you are an owner or a member. You can always view what tags are available. If I click on your tags, it'll show me the tags that I'm currently a part of. Um, the create tag is only going to be available for members, or, or I'm sorry, for owners, unless they have allowed members to be able to create tags. Uh, but here we can see the tags, and if I click on a tag, it will give me who is in it, and it will allow me to chat with that group. So that is a great way if there's a tag that has already been created and you want to create a group chat with you and all the people in that tag, you can do that from this menu right here. And then you can also add people this way and change the name of the tag. Alrighty. Um, does any current team member have the option to add other members to a team or are certain members designated as admins to grant permission to add members? So uh, when you create a team, you are the owner. That is the title. Um, you can add new people as members or as owners. Uh, and by default, I think only owners are allowed to add people um, without any kind of permission. So let me see. Um, yeah, I don't think they're allowed to, members are ever allowed to just invite people to private teams. However, if you are a member of a private team, you can uh, invite somebody else to join that team. However, they will not join right away. They will show up under pending requests here. And an owner of that team will have to approve that pending request before that new person can join that team. Uh, I see a question about creating meetings. Don't worry, that's the next thing I'm going to get into. 
Um, and I have a question about multitasking in Teams. Uh, I do just want to say that right now, um, Teams is a single window experience in the preview for Teams. You can actually pop out different windows to be able to work on different things at once. That is something that is still undergoing testing. Um, so right now, we do not have that availability, but that is something um, that is going to be coming. And I see someone asking what the purpose of a tag is. The purpose of a tag is um, to have a group of people listed under something that can be mentioned. Um, so I can, for example, I have project one legal and project two legal, uh, and I can mention those tags if I want to get the attention of people within that tag without having to individually mention every single person within that tag. And then I also see uh, manage tags option isn't available. If it's not available, then it may not be turned on for your tenant. That would be something you would need to talk with your system administrator or your IT department about. I see, is the telephone integrated with our office phone? That is an extra service that needs to be purchased. Um, so if your organization has purchased that ability, then yes. Uh, if not, then no, Teams will only call other people in Teams and your phone lines will only call um, other phone lines. However, uh, when I get into meetings momentarily, I can show you how to call into a meeting if that is something you need to do. Cool, I think that is everything for now. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the calendar and creating meetings in Teams. All right, so this is our calendar within Microsoft Teams. Um, it does have a very similar view to Outlook. One of the main differences, like I said, is you will not have access to group calendars or um, shared calendars. Uh, also, you only have the ability to view day, work week, or regular week. Uh, we don't have the ability to view monthly yet. Um, but they're always adding new things, so that could be coming in the future. Here we can move to today. We can also move forward in the calendar as well, um, and we can select which month we want to view right here. Go back to today. Um, over here, we have the ability to meet now, which will create a meeting with just me, and then I can manually add people to that meeting. Uh, but we can also click on this to create a new meeting, and that is what I am going to do. Keep in mind there might be an arrow over here for you. If you click on that, you can also create a live event. Uh, a live event is what we are currently doing right now. The biggest difference between a meeting and a live event is a meeting can only have up to 250 people, but all of those people can speak and share their video. Um, all together and basically discuss and brainstorm all together, whereas a live event is up to 10,000 attendees, but you can only have a few uh, presenters and producers who can um, present to their screen and talk. Uh, everybody else will be like you are right now, where you are viewing the presentation and you are able to ask questions in the chat. Uh, but you are not able to actually share your screen or talk. So I'm going to go ahead and click on new meeting and show you what it is like to create a new meeting. And again, if you are used to Outlook, this is going to be very similar to Microsoft Outlook and how you create meetings that way. You can add a title to your meeting right here. That's going to be the subject of the meeting. That's going to be what the meeting is called. You can add required attendees right here. And you can also click to add optional attendees if you want to as well. I'm going to go ahead and add Mike and John and Arthur and Marvin and system administrator. And I'm going to go ahead and suggest a time for the meeting. I'm going to go ahead and say 3 o'clock on June 16th. And now you can see that three of my names have now turned red. And that is because 
Teams automatically checks the schedules of the people that you make a meeting with and tells you whether or not those people are available during that time. So if I see this and I want to know when these guys are going to be available, I can click on scheduling assistant right up here. And that is going to give me the availability of all of the people that I am making the meeting with. So I can see that I am unavailable from 10 to 1030 and I'm also unavailable from three o'clock to five o'clock. Notice that Marvin also has a, another meeting from 11 o'clock to 1130. And because of that, this right here, this all attendees availability is going to extend to where Marvin's availability is as well, because this is the availability of everybody and not just individual people. So because Marvin has an extra thing that he's working on, that is going to extend. So you definitely want to put your meeting somewhere in here where you can see that everybody is available. It also gives you suggested times over here, and those suggested times are also going to be based on the scheduling assistant as well. We also have repeating options or recurring options. Uh, we can choose to recur every weekday, every day, every week, every month, every year. We can even hit custom right here and have a custom start date, repeat every one day or every other day or every three days, and we can give it an end date as well. You can tag an entire channel in a meeting as well, and what that will do is it will allow anybody who is has access to that channel the ability to join that meeting and add it to their calendar. You can also add a location for the meeting and you can type details for the meeting as well. I'm going to show you what it's like inside a meeting, but real quick, I do want to switch over to uh, Outlook real quick so you can see what it looks like um, when I uh, create a Teams meeting in Outlook. So give me one second to move my desktop over. So here you can see my Outlook calendar. This is the same as my um, Teams calendar. Uh, there, it's going different, to look different than the one you were just looking at because this is my um, actual Outlook calendar and not my demo Outlook calendar. But up here at the ribbon at the top, you will see the new Teams meeting button. And if I click on that, it's going to open a new window, which means I'm going to have to reshare my screen. And there we go, it is going to create a Teams meeting invitation. Right here, I can add people in the two bar to send them an invitation. I can also click on two right here and it'll give me a list of people in my organization that I can add. I can add the subject, location, uh, start time, start day, end day, end time. And then here is the uh, uh, join information as well. You can click join online now from any device and it'll take you to the website where you can join or you can open up the app from the website and join that way. Or if you want to join by phone, you can call this number and then add this conference ID when it asks. Um, so when you call the number, it'll prompt you to add the conference ID, type that in followed by the pound sign and uh, that will allow you to join it via phone. Um, so this will create a Teams meeting. Uh, it'll show up on your Teams calendar and anybody who gets the invite will be able to show up. Um, so if you need to invite external people or guests that aren't in your organization to your Teams meeting, this would be how you do it. Just put their email in this box right here. Alrighty, so now I'm going to go ahead and click meet now and I'm going to show you what some of our settings look like inside an actual meeting.
All right, so this is an impromptu meeting or an ad hoc meeting. Um, I can just call it meeting with Shane. That's all I'm going to call it for now. Uh, this is what is called the lobby or the powder room. Uh, if I had allowed it to use my camera or my microphone, I could toggle those on and off from in here before I um, enter the meeting. I can adjust my device settings from here as well if I need to fiddle around before I go into the meeting. I can join with my audio off, which is helpful if there are other people in the same room as me who are already in the meeting. This way it does not create echo or reverb. Or I can even use my phone for the audio and use my computer for the video if, say, I don't have headphones or speakers or a microphone on my computer. But I'm going to go ahead and click join now. And this is what it looks like inside of a meeting in Microsoft Teams. Here is the time for how long the meeting has been going. I can again turn the camera on or unmute. Here is one of the major differences between using Teams in the web app and using it on the desktop app. When using it in the web app, I cannot actually screen share. Um, I can only add files that I have uploaded to Teams. Um, so I can't do a full sh screen share like I can in the desktop app. Here I have the ability to raise my hand. This is a new feature, so you may not have availability to it yet. But what this does is it allows you to let somebody know that you're ready to talk or it allows you to take quick polling. You can say everybody raise your hand if you want to do this and then I'll show you how many people raise their hand. Um, I've clicked raise my hand and now you can see over here in the list of people in the meeting, it shows the hand icon next to my name. So you can quickly see how many people have their hand up. Um, these two options will open a pane over here on the right. The participants option is already open and this will allow me to add people to this meeting by putting in their um, email address here or typing in a phone number that I can then use to call them. And up here, I can change some permissions about the meeting, like who can uh, bypass the lobby. I can also download an attendance list, which will give me a list of all the people who joined the meeting, when they joined it, and how long they were in the meeting. Here I can click show conversation, and what that does is it allows me to uh, talk in a meeting chat. A chat created for a meeting will be a group chat that uh, will, excuse me, will include everybody that has been invited to the meeting. So if there is any chat sent in this group chat right now, it will show up as a chat within the chat menu over here. We can also click on this ellipsis to uh, get more options. Oh, real quick, I forgot to mention, this is the hang up button. This will let me leave the meeting. Um, everybody else will continue on in the meeting if I hang up, however, even if I'm the organizer. Show device settings. Again, we can look at our uh, headphones or speakers or microphone and play around with those. Show meeting notes if anybody has taken notes before the meeting or is taking notes during the meeting. We can show the meeting notes here. Uh, we can show the meeting details. This is just going to be the join information again. We can enter full screen. We can bring up a keypad in case we're dialing somebody into the meeting and we need to enter an extension or something like that. We have that available. We can record the meeting. If I record the meeting um, and I start the recording, the recording will be uploaded to Microsoft Stream um, and I will be the owner of that recording, so I will be able to download it and distribute it how I feel. And end meeting is a way to completely end the meeting. Instead of just hanging up and me leaving the meeting, this will end the meeting and everybody will be forced off the meeting. And then turn off incoming video allows me to turn off the video of other people in the meeting. If it is just an audio meeting and everybody's just talking and I want to listen in and maybe my service isn't that great, 
I can turn off incoming video and that will help with my bandwidth. All righty. Um, let me go ahead and see what questions I have. All right, I have a couple specific questions about troubleshooting and stuff like that. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to troubleshoot for you. This is just a training presentation. Um, I would recommend you go in through your help menu in Teams if you're having any issues with stuff like that. Uh, I have a question about adding people to chats and meetings. Does it pull from the Outlook contact list? It actually pulls from your organizational address book. Um, your contact list and Outlook is specifically people that you have added from your organizational out, uh, address book or um, people outside your organization. Uh, keep in mind, uh, by default, Teams does not interact with people outside your organization. They would have to be added manually as a guest before you can interact with them in Teams. Um, I see a question about recurrence versus series. So right now, if I want to edit this, um, this meeting is in a series and you can see I have my editing options and right now under where it would normally say repeat, it says you are viewing an occurrence of a series. And if I want to view the entire series instead, I can click on view series and that will allow me to change the options of the entire series itself. So yes, you can uh, change between viewing a single occurrence and editing a single occurrence as opposed to um, editing the entire series of, a, uh, of an event. Um, I have somebody who wants me to go over uh, making a Teams meeting in Outlook. Sure thing. So this is my Outlook. If you have Outlook set up and Teams set up, you should have a button in the ribbon of your calendar up here at the top that says new Teams meeting. And that is where you will be able to uh, create a Teams meeting using Outlook. After you click on that, all the options are going to be the same for creating a new meeting, except it will have the Teams information as a part of it. Uh, is there a way to default a Teams meeting to allow everyone to enter versus going to lobby? Yes, there is. Uh, let me go ahead and switch over back to Teams and I can show you what that looks like. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on meet now again, continue without audio or video. Yes, 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 join now. So you may or may not have this option depending on your tenant. Again, talk to your system administrator or your IT department. Um, but up here uh, under people, it's going to have this button right here, which is more permissions. If I click on that, it's going to take me to another web page, which will allow me to um, adjust this. And I can choose who is allowed to bypass the lobby. So I can say people in my organization can bypass the lobby, people in my organization and uh, trusted individuals, I think it says, or everyone can bypass the lobby. So this way you can set it up whether people are allowed to bypass the lobby or not. Um, you can also uh, tell it whether you want the callers to be able to bypass the lobby as well. So if you want everybody to be able to bypass, you can just enable that.
Um, I see a question. Can you do a video call with external people you call on their phone? So if you are calling them on their phone from within Teams, uh, no, they will not be able to get the video. However, they do not need to have Teams. Uh, you can um, send them an email invitation to a meeting and they can click on the link in that email and they can just go to the web app and join the video call from the web app and they will not need to have Teams installed. Alrighty. So we are about out of time. I just want to briefly touch on a couple more things. Um, like I said, this call section right here is just your contacts and your voicemail and your call history. It's pretty straightforward. Your files right here uh, will allow you to um, look at the files that you have accessed within Teams. However, it's not super organized. I would recommend if you're looking for a specific file, you definitely want to search for it with the search bar up here. Um, so if I search for please, because I know that a uh, file was added with the word please in it, I can look under messages. There's a lot of messages that say please, so I can skip that. But if I go over to files, here we go. Please check this. This is exactly what I was looking for. Um, so you definitely want to use that search bar whenever you can. It's definitely going to be very helpful. Um, and then down here we have the help menu. Uh, if I click on topics right here, this is going to allow me to look at some training on Teams. So if you have any other questions about Teams, you can always go in here and uh, watch videos and read articles. Um, same thing if you click on training as well. Uh, again, these are going to be um, more specific things that you can go through. And you can always search for, for example, uh, if I could type create a meeting, I can search for that. Boom, there we go. Step by step instructions on how to create a meeting. Uh, so very helpful training that is completely built into Teams. What's new is going to be all of the updates that have been added to Teams and when they were added to them. So now you will be able to see these updates whenever anything changes. And then lastly, the most important part suggesting a feature and giving feedback. Uh, if there's something Teams doesn't do that you want it to be able to do, if you click on suggest a feature, that will take you to the um, Teams feedback space. I would definitely recommend going to this if you have an idea and go ahead and look and see if anybody else has submitted your idea and the Teams engineers will respond and tell you whether or not it is being worked on or not. This is partially done. This one's being worked on. Um, this one's on the backlog, meaning it's not a priority, but it will eventually be added. Um, and if somebody has already added your idea, you can vote on it to uh, raise it in the eyes of the engineers. If nobody else has added your idea, you can also add your own feedback in there as well. And you can also give feedback, and that is if there's something about feedback that's not something about teams that's not working right or that you want to change, you can go ahead and give feedback. I can tell you that Microsoft takes feedback very seriously. Um, I have seen the word clouds that the engineers use to narrow down the feedback, and they take it very seriously. And a lot of the things that have been added to teams have been added based on suggested features and feedback. Um, other than that, I think we are about done. I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep this open for a little bit longer just to answer any new questions that might come in. But I do want to thank everybody for coming to our training today. Uh, this has been a great training. You guys have had some great questions, so I really appreciate it. Um, and again, I want to thank you. I also want to thank my moderator, Brandon, uh, for being here and for answering your questions as well. So thanks a lot. Again, I am going to keep it open for a couple more minutes just in case any other questions come in.
All right, when it comes to screen sharing, um, I'm not really able to do a whole lot with it myself uh, because again, this is the um, web version and it is not going to be very robust. But if you are inside of a Teams meeting, you are going to see this button right here where it says share. And if I click on that, uh, it will show me the ability to share my desktop window right here, or I can share specific windows I have open over here. It is going to look a little bit different for you if you are using the, the desktop app. You're going to have some more options here. Right now it's just giving me some uh, PowerPoints that I already have uploaded because I could share those, but I can't share any of the uh, windows that I already have open. Um, when it comes to shortcuts, I don't know if there's a way to add screen sharing as a specific shortcut. Uh, however, some keyboard shortcuts are available um, by going into this menu up here and clicking on keyboard shortcuts and you can look at some keyboard shortcuts here. All right, and at this point we are about 10 minutes over. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut this training off, but I do appreciate everybody coming here and uh, staying here for the training and being so active with the questions. I love to see people asking questions about teams. Um, and if you do need anything in the future, get in contact with the person who sent you this invitation in the first place, um, and they should be able to get you in contact with somebody in our organization um, who is helping to schedule these, uh, or they might be able to answer the question for you. So thank you again and uh, have a wonderful day, everybody.